one second sir i'll just have a glass of water all right so this is your file middle of it Ah, okay, yeah. So, so this is a case where I think it, this is a normal shutdown. So, when you build a compressor model, the, the kind of information that you need to have is one: you need to have your equipment volumes. That is where you because remember in HiSys, what you are actually what HiSys is doing is that it is only a thermodynamic solver. It is only interested in the volumes. You can put pipes and which it will do the hydraulics. But for the dynamic simulation analysis, it's the volumes which really matter finally. So when you give your diameter height, when you do your equipment sizing, line sizing and all that, the value that is actually going into the simulation is this, the volume. So in this case, it's 28.67 meter cube. That, 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 that's, um, it's, that, so that in this case, it's the volume. For coolers, what we do is, the, you not only give, where is it? Uh, you not only give the cooler volume. After you size an air cooler, you put the volume here. The, 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 that is the volume of the tubes, that is pi by four D square L, the diameter of the inner diameter of the tube and length of the tube, multiplied by the number of the tube, number of tubes, you can put that volume here. But you must also give what is called a K value. K means is a loss coefficient. It is basically the dynamic head. Uh, kv square by 2g value kv square by 2g if you convert it to mass flow rate terms kv ah, mass flow rate terms it is nothing but mass mass flow rate divided by square root of pressure drop into density what does this mean what this means is that in steady state when you are doing a steady state you are giving the pressure drop so let's say cooler has 0.5 bar pressure drop in high steady state you will open the cooler and you will say 0.5 bar here and uh, 0.5 bar, you'll say 0.5 and tap, you just, you, but then you see in steady state, you're doing a heat and material balance. So let's say you have 1000 kg per hour flowing. What you're doing is you're simply putting 0.5 there. You're declaring it as 0.5. But let's say if this 1000 became 1000, uh, if this, uh, if the flow rate was, went from 1000 to 1200 kg per hour, the pressure drop will not be 0.5. The pressure drop will become could can become 0.55 or 0.6. So the purpose of putting this K value loss coefficient is <coughs> depending on the flow rate. If the flow rate is changing, so in this case right now I think it is about 50, 57,000 kg per hour. Let's say if this went from 57,000 kg per hour, it became 60,000 kg per hour. Using this K value, HISIS will calculate what is the new pressure drop. So instead of 0.35, it can become 0.36 or 0.37, it will, it will increase. So for the cooler, you have to put the K value and you have to put the volumes as well. K value, you can compute it as based on, so let's say this was a heat and material balance you're doing and you put point, let's say 0 0.30, let's say. <coughs> See, it will automatically calculate the K value. After what you, after that, what you do, you switch the bound, you switch it to this thing. So, if I increase the the flow rate increases, this 0.3 can become higher, 0.32. Or in case the flow rate decreases, the pressure drop will also come down from 0.3 to 0.29 or 0.28 like that. So, therefore, for the coolers, you the important piece of information is not only the the volumes, which is because the the the, the process flow the compressor fluid is flowing through the tubes. Therefore, you put the tube volume here, total tube volume. You also put the loss coefficient value here. And it will automatically compute what is the um, pressure drop across the cooler. Then for all the check valves, okay, check valve is anyway, you just have to click on this check valve. For the check valve, because it is assumed that you're not losing, you're not losing much pressure there. So what you do is you give a very high CV value, some 100,000 or 200,000 something you can give. So what happens is that the estimated pressure drop is 0 0.0005. It's all as good as hardly any pressure drop. In reality, 
in the field there will be some pressure drop but for simulation purposes we are we are approximating it to almost no pressure losses so for check valves check valves and block valves also both check valves and block valves give a high cv value by giving a high cv value because you see if, if they're all the full bore valves if you look into the pipe so you have a pipe and you have a valve if it is open and you look through it it the the the, the valves opening is also a, is the same as the pipes opening so in such cases you can give a high cv to say that there is hardly any pressure drop across the pipe so check valves and block valves you don't have to bore uh, you you just you just approximate it to almost no pressure drop for the suction scrubbers you have to give the volume for the air cooler you have to give the volume and also the loss coefficient then for the gas compressor naturally you have to put your uh, performance maps you need to have three uh, three pieces of information you need to have your polytropic head for a given volumetric flow rate and also polytropic efficiency so these three parameters you need to have and for each speed you enter them here now the if you observe this is the actual data from this 2638 this is the actual data but then what are these two points this was manually entered but then what are those two points that is this this region that you're looking at okay, stonewall and oh it is not shown here okay fine so this this region this yellow these dots that are there this is given by the manufacturer this is given by the manufacturer but then you are doing your simulation in hisis and what hisis does is as it keeps moving inside the envelope it will keep um, interpolating between each point when it does a calculation but let's say the point came somewhere here hisis does not know what to do so what we do is that we simply add some points here the reality is that this, these curves are like polynomial. What we are doing is we are just straightening it out. So the idea of extending these lines is for computational reasons, no other reason, is to prevent the simulation from crashing. So do extend the lines if you are, if you are, when 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 you know that the operating, if when you feel that when you when you when you know for sure that the the results are 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 not too accurate. When you are doing a shutdown, it, it's the operating point will start flying in all the different directions like this. When you do an actual simulation, what happens is the moment it crosses this uh, surge line, it will go up and down like this, flying up in, in the air. If you don't want that to happen, extend these lines to the X and Y axis. So that way it is at least, it knows its boundary conditions when it is computing. That is the next thing. So therefore, you must, uh, um, for, for the, for the, for the, for the gas compressor, you have to have your performance maps. Next, when you for the ASV, when you are sizing it, please remember it is the vendor who decides what the ASV size should be. But let's say you are in the proposal stage or you are in the front end stage, where the manufacturer still has not given you data, but you have to do uh, at least tentatively what size of a CV do you have to put you can estimate but you must share those results with the compressor vendor because it, he gives you the guarantee and warranty it is his own piece of machinery and he has the final say as to what should be the anti surge valve size now in this uh, surgery that um, pdf file can you just show some of the material yeah if you come down i have given you i've, I've given a procedure here how to size your anti surge valve? You can do it by, I mean, by hand means on Excel. Oh, it's stuck. Oh. Ah, okay. Oh, so no, 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 no. Okay, this is for settle out conditions, how you can calculate, estimate. <coughs> ah, so I've given a procedure here for how to estimate. Uh, the 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 this thing your uh, anti surge valve size so in this case i think i've got uh, oh it's running too slow anyway the, the file is with you so you can you can go through it so in this case i did a one sample calculation 
where I think I've said finally a CV of 112.721 or oh, 113. No, 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 wait. Ah, okay, so you choose a valve of some 236 CV. And then with that valve size, I did a dynamic simulation. Now, even this, this is going very close to the choke flow region. Uh, the data, I took it from the valve data. I took it from Fisher's or Emerson's handbook. And either they had a two inch, three inch and four inch, no, sorry, two inch, four inch, six inch. Um, and the CV and the difference was too high. But in reality, okay, here it is four inch, uh, 236 CV. In case you find a manufacturer who can do it for, let's say, 200 also, what will happen is that this curve, it will go like this, and instead of moving up to the choke flow line, it will move much closer. You're still well within the operating model. Anyway, I'll, I'll run the simulation and I'll show it to you. Um, so even scheduler, they can figure it out, isn't it, for 